Daniel Grove, and in this video, part one, I'm going to show you how I made this Star Wars inspired scene. I'll go over the kit bashing, the textures and materials, the scene setup, and tons of helpful tips for rendering cool scenes like this. And then in part two, the next video, I'll show you how I did the post processing of Photoshop to bring this render to life. So let's get started with the asset browser. And I will be using my Star Wars or Galaxy Spaceship Kit Bash product that I sell on Blender Market and Gumroad. If you love Star Wars and spaceships, definitely go get this product. It's a ton of fun to use to build spaceships. Here it is in the asset browser. I'm going to start with the tie looking spaceship that is in the foreground. All right, the main cockpit for this first ship was using this very first body piece. So I'm going to drag and drop that. I'm going to press Alt G to reset the locations to zeros. So each time I build a spaceship, I like to build it on the zero point of the X and Y grid. And then once it's done, I'll put it in a collection and move it off to the side. But we're starting with this first ship here. I spread these outer cockpits apart to give some more space in the middle. So to do that, I'm going to uh, go to an above view tab into edit mode. And as you see, this is using a mirror modifier. So I'm going to turn on my x-ray so I can select everything um, in front and behind. Control L to grab pretty much this whole thing. Mine has a few little pieces here. Let's see if I can find those pieces using my C for circle select there. And then whatever this thing is right there. There we go. Control L. Yeah, that got everything. Okay, so seven for above you. I'm going to G, Y, move this out a little bit. It gives me some more room here. And I think what I did originally was I just copied this piece over a few times. Oh, we got some left over. It's okay. Delete that. It's Star Wars. Things can be messy. Um, so I'm going to uh, B for box select this whole thing. Control L to make sure I got everything. And just uh, Shift D to, to duplicate it out. Uh, there we go. It just gives a little bit more space. Um, and then another cool trick is if we grab this, Control L and then Control I. It's an easy way to basically invert our selection. Let me do that one more time. Select it all with box, control L, control I to invert our selection. And let's just move it in just a little bit right about there. Okay, yeah, that looks about right. Okay, now I had a gun on the top center, which is a pivoting turret. So let's go to our weapons. And it's got a square base. I think it's this one right here. Yeah, so let's uh, Alt G and then uh, GZ, let's scale it down a little bit, RZ90. To rotate it. and I had it facing backwards because it's shooting behind at that, um, you know, what I assume is a rebellion ship behind there. So I'm just going to face it backwards for now. I'll show you how to do pivoting later. It's pretty cool. It's kind of an alternative to using bones. We can actually rotate this mechanically, you know, using these, uh, these parts. Um, okay, uh, let's see what else we got here. We got some um, tie wings on the side, which are these curved ones. Cool story. This ship is actually built with the... Uh, help of my son and his friend. <laughs> um, I said, hey guys, you wanna help me build a spaceship? And of course they said yes. So I showed them the asset browser and they picked out the pieces for me. And I just slapped it all together. And I had the wings kind of pushed back a little bit um, to make the other wing without really actually duplicating it. We're gonna make a mirror modifier. This is a technique that is pretty standard in kit bashing of this type is mirror modifiers based on a central object. So if you didn't, if you missed that, this is a mirror, mirror modifier that right here that we're using one on the bottom. I clicked on mirror object and I selected something that I know is in the center, which is this piece because the, the origin is right perfectly in the middle. So this is copying it based on that origin to the other side. You could do like all four axes like this and have like four of something. Uh, I'm not doing that right now, but that I'm only using one axis of uh, mirroring right now. Okay, moving in just a little bit. Let's get some other weapons. I had some cool uh, long, some long guns here. Where are they? These guys, I think. RZ90, seven for above view. And I'm just going to put this right inside the wing. And I think I scaled it up a little bit to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, just like that. I'll also move it back a little bit. Cool. And let's do that mirror trick on this guy. Mirror. And then use the central object. And make sure you use the Y axis. There we go. Cool. We could make four of these if we also checked Z and just moved it up like that. A little too X-wingy for me, but you know what? It's cool. I'm going to keep it. In our accessories, we have a whole bunch of different greebly and um, additional pieces just to fill in gaps and make stuff look cool because that's what it's all about. So I use this. Let's put that piece right there. I'm going to move it up. This kit bash does come with a number of really awesome materials that are semi-procedural. Uh, so this is using the machine part texture, whereas these are all using whole one. So I'm just going to switch this to whole one. There we go. So it matches. And we're going to do um, 
the uh, mirror trick times two. So we'll grab that center object. Let's do Y and Z. So we have the underneath part right there. I think I put this piece in the front here. Let's rotate this like that. Uh, let's see, three is a front view, good. Shrink it down a little bit like that. And then I had it going into some kind of grill object. Let's use this one. This might've been what I used, I don't remember. Um, move it forwards. Let's uh, switch this material to the whole one. So the um, this, like I said, this kit comes with a bunch of uh, materials. Uh, when I said Sumer Procedural, basically what that means is it's based off of a PBR, which I made custom, an original PBR. Um, but there are mixed in a number of noise uh, techniques that make uh, that add a procedure element to it, and um, it's for like grime and some other stuff. It's really cool. There we go, and let's mirror that. And only the front of the ship can be seen in this render, so I'm not going to do make the back. And I only care about the front that's visible. Okay, and because of that, I'm not going to bother connecting these. <laughs> I did have a cylinder piece here to connect it when I made my original render, but it's not visible, so I'm not going to waste my time with that. I am going to put another turret underneath here, and I'm actually not going to mirror this because the top one's going to be doing something different than the bottom one. So I'm, I'm just going to do Shift D Z and rotate 180 R 180. There we go. Cool. So let me show you how I made this pivotable and posable. So this is one mesh, right? But there's separate pieces inside here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make we're going to make uh, two separate objects. So first, I'm going to um, grab the the base here. There we go. Control L. And then P, separate by selection. So now this is a separate object, and this is a separate object. We're going to do that again to get the gun on its own object as well, which will allow us to, of course, pose and position it. So I'm just going to use my C, circle select, to kind of real messily grab all the individual pieces here. Control L. Oh, we missed one little chunk there. Control L. There we go. So to press G to move it to make sure you got the whole thing. And now we're going to P for separate and selection. There we go. So we have it all done. Um, we do need to move the origin point of this up. So I'm going to press three and the origin point is this little dot right here. I'm sorry. Let me get that out of there. There we go. Uh, the dot there. So we can move that by pressing in and then going to uh, tool origins. So GZ. I'm going to try to put it right in the center of this axis that I wanted to pivot on. There we go. So now I can R. Y and rotate it just like a mechanical gun. And then this thing already has the axis in the right place. So our last thing is we're going to do parenting. So select the gun and then select the, 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 the bracket, control P, parent to object. So now this is a child and this is a parent. So look, when I rotate the bracket, it moves the gun and that's all we need to do. We, do, we could parent this to this, but we don't really need to because this isn't moving around. Now I can rotate this, R, Z, and then R. X, oh, look at that. We well, need to or rotate it on the uh, local, I think we'll do it. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So now we can position this and aim it at the other ship, which we'll do once we have it positioned. So that's basically it for this ship. Uh, the last thing I'll do when I make a ship like this, I'm going to make an empty and put this inside of it. So Shift A, make an empty uh, cube. And I like to size it up to roughly contain the, you know, the, the shape of the ship. You can even scale it down like that. Cool. So we're going to box select all this stuff minus the light. So holding shift, there we go. I, I basically right clicked on that twice to deselect it. For me, right click is select. For you newer kids out there who, you know, haven't been using Blender for 10 years, um, you may think right click select is ridiculous. And I did too when I first started. <laughs> so shift select the empty again to make this the active object. See how it's brighter orange? That means this is the active one. These are, I don't know what they're called the other selected things and then control p object there we go so now everything is parent to the empty awesome oh and let's put this in a collection so it's easier to turn on and off for um for later so all we want is empty and the ship m for move and the new collection i'll name it tie ship there we go it's a tie duo that's a cool name right um we could add some thrust back here it might be visible, but honestly, a lot of the thrust from this angle, when we finally do the render, will probably be in post. But I will show you a quick trick on how to make some thrust very easily. 
Uh, I'm going to get my 3D cursor in the middle here. So I select these two faces and then uh, shift S and use cursor to select it, which in the case of having two things selected, it'll perfectly like average the location. And now my 3D cursor is right in the middle, which is what I want. Okay. So shift A, we're going to make a cylinder, size it up, R, Y, 90, enter. And let's move it out a little bit. And this is the lazy way of doing thrust. There is a, a better way to do thrust with like volumes and you know volumetrics, which gives it a really nice shape and realism. But we're going to do the lazy way, which is just a, a emissions with a gradient. So in our shader tab, let's make a new material over here. I'm going to name it um, lazy thrust. <laughs> that sounds strange. And assign. There we go. So now this thrust shape has this thing we're doing here, delete the BSDF, shift a search emission, EMI, shift a search transparency or transparent, actually put the transparent on top, shift a uh, type in mix for mix shader. And now we're going to plug in transparent on the A and emission on the B and then surface. All right. So emissions, let's give it, uh, I forgot what color the TIE fighter emission is, but I'm going to go with a warmer color. Whereas the good guy ship in the background will be blue. Just so we have some difference in color. So uh, we're going to plug in something here to basically fade the thrust away into zero as it gets to the end of the cone. We're going to use a gradient a node for that. So plug that into factor. Now let's preview what this is doing by pressing control shift clicking. That uses node wrangler. Now I got lucky. This is exactly what I wanted, but sometimes you don't get so lucky and you have to use like mapping nodes. You have to like rotate this like 90 degrees and, you know, do all kinds of positioning stuff with like X and Y. Um, but I got lucky and I may move this up a little bit. You can kind of reposition where this gradient map is landing. Um, and yeah, cool. So let's go to rendered view and see what this looks like. Oh, I need to uh, preview the final node because right now, look, we're only previewing the gradient map. We want to control shift click that and there we go we have an emissions material that fades to transparent at the end and that is awesome uh, we can control that fall off there you can also use a color ramp or you can even use the scale here to play with uh, the speed of the fall off but i want to keep it like that maybe turn our emissions up to like 10 so it actually gives off some light cool okay Let's do some material tweaking. Now the scene is very dark, so I'm going to turn my light up to 10 and make it a little bit softer for now, just so we can see um, what the material looks like. For whatever reason, I chose to make this ship kind of reddish um, because, you know, I just feel like in the Star Wars universe, there's so many, there's so much room for variety and customization and even rip off ships and, you know, uh, off, off market, off brand um, copycats that who knows what color ships could be. They can be anything. So I'm going to go to my whole one material, which is a little complex at first. <laughs> it's really just a whole bunch of mixed nodes uh, all up here. You can see there's literally a chain of mixed nodes. What are they mixing in? Well, they're mixing these three textures. They're mixing some procedural noise. They're mixing some ambient occlusion, even some random per island to give each set of faces in the model a different value of black. So there's a lot of a lot of room for variety. There's uh, there's also these vertex maps, which, which can be used for painting on burn marks. I have that shown in my um, the Star Wars video where I basically show off how to do this kit bash, but won't do that in this video. So anyway, let's do a cool coloring trick here. I'm going to add one more mix color here, and I'm going to put it in color mode, and then we're going to use the one of these textures. I think it's the random one. It has a really good let's see. Color, color three. Let's let's preview these, see what they look like. Yeah, I'll, I'll use colors three. So these are all different renditions of the same set of panels that became a PBR map. So I'm going to plug in this um, black and white texture into that color thing we just made right here. And I'm going to make, oh, this is getting really messy. Let me clear, clean this up a little bit. There we go. We're going to use a color ramp to add color. I like to do this with a nice panel texture. Um, so basically we're going to preview this now. This is what we're playing with, right? We have the con contrast, we can invert it and I'm, but I'm going to use this instead of for black and white values, I'm going to use this for color. So I'm going to start with like a dark red color and then it's going to move up to maybe a, um, brighter red color. And then I will leave some on the top, which will have no color or white. 
So now we can play with the contrast, which parts are dark, how much of it is red, how much of it is white. Uh, we could even go to constant to add like a real harsh cutoff, right? It's just, it's either one color or the next. It's not in between. There is no gradient at this point. And that looks pretty cool. I like that. This is actually like a cell shading look right here, kind of anime. Um, so this data is going to be colorizing everything before it. Everything that's coming to this, this final mix node is going to get colorized. So now let's preview the BSDF. So get the final result. And there we go. There is, of course, tons of room to customize this texture uh, by playing, you know, with these values and these different mix amounts. Can add some more noise to make it dirtier. A little bit more bump. Awesome. And one thing I found that was that the, this black glass was a little too perfect for me. So uh, let's uh, get to a view of angle where you can actually see the glass. And we're going to add some more noise to it. There we go. We got a nice... Uh, glare of, uh, of light there. So this trick gives a realistic fall off to reflections, mostly for round objects. So I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to plug in a noise texture, good old boring noise texture into the roughness. Let's give it some crunch with some added detail there and a higher roughness. And make sure our handles here are closer together. That'll give us that contrast we want. Awesome. There we go. Okay, another touch I did to my ship in my uh, original render was I added a little bit of a glowing um, area behind this grill as if it was super hot. So I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to try to select this face that's behind these grill fins. There it is. And over here, it's right there. And yeah, that's the whole thing on one side. Let's make a glowing orange texture. Um, here's a quick way to change this into just an emissions shader. Click on the BSDF and just type E. There we go. It switches over to emissions, saves you some time. Make it maybe strength of four. Don't forget to click assign. Rendered view to make sure it's working. Yep, there we go. Got a nice glow. And I didn't like this big gap here. So I'm just going to grab this piece. I'm just going to grab this piece here and just move it. Move it over. Cover up that gap. All right, so we're done with this thing. Let's move this over to the side. And let's make the good guy ship here in the middle. Switch back to our asset browser, body parts. I used this, which at first glance looks like a Star Destroyer, but it's actually kind of a small to medium sized body. At least, I mean, you can use it for a Star Destroyer. I saw someone use it as a huge Star Destroyer shape, and I thought that was cool, um, but it is actually more of an A-wing size or uh, X-wing size piece. So there's that. Let's add some of these uh, cylinder pieces from the round parts. I actually didn't use an engine for the engine, which is weird because there's some really good engines in this kit. I, I love the engines, but I actually didn't use them <laughs> for the engines in this one. Three for a front view, and this texture has hole one. This uh, ship is actually not gonna use hole one. We're gonna use bright metal. So I'm gonna change it over to bright metal. There we go. Move it here. And I'm using this engine also as a sort of um, joint, if you will, for this kind of weird wing design you'll see in a second. There we go. And let's mirror this underneath. There we go. If you want to do an X-Wing style, you can do Z like that, but I'm going to stick with a two-wing fighter. And I use this funny little stubby wing thing to be kind of the connecting piece. Let's put it at a 45 so it's just we know what it is. There we go. Let's change the material to bright metal. And I think I had it flipped this way. Let's move it back a little bit. And I had it at a 45. So let's just do R45. There we go. Cool. All right. Let's move, maybe move it up a little bit in closer into the engine thingy. Yeah, that's better. Awesome. And then I use, let's see, which wing did I use? I used wing 003. Here it is. I'm going to press Alt R to reset the rotation. And it is. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess we'll just use it on this side and we'll mirror it over. So let's mirror this guy. It would be really nice to have like some kind of keyboard shortcut to do this for me. If anyone knows how to do that, that'd be awesome. Here we go. Try to make them the same thickness. There we go. Switch the material over. It's annoying me. Awesome. And um, I'm just going to use weapons as the joint. So let's use this cool barrel thing. Let's put it here to stretch it. I'm breaking the rules here. 
make it bright metal as well so it blends in. There we go. Cool. Again, the backside is not visible. Now let's mirror these over and mirror this one. It would be nice if, copy, if you could copy and paste uh, modifiers. Um, that would save me a lot of time. There's probably a, a way to do that with a, like an add-on or something, but you know, haven't found it. Um, let's put some guns at the end. And I like this satellite one. This is inspired by the X-Wing um, blaster. Let's put it into place. A little connecting bridge there. GZ. Cool. Give it the correct material. Awesome. And let's mirror that. And then I stuck a cockpit on top. It didn't really match very well. <laughs> so I did my best. I think it was this one right here. So let's Alt G, Alt R to get the rotations back to zero. And then um, it's right about here. It's kind of close to the end. Let's change the hole to bright metal. And I, I kind of rotated it at a funny angle. Just try to help it fit in there. There we go. And my son's request, he wanted to have, to have spikes along the back, like a stegosaurus thing. So we're going to do that. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> okay. And then I put some uh, cannons in the front that were actually the ones shooting. So let's find those. It's the one with the wire on the end, or is it? It's a pretty cool one. Yeah, I think it's this one. There we go. Size is pretty good. It's kind of a big one. And this is like a double cannon. So I'm going to mirror that. There we go. Fix the material. Awesome. All right, cool. Let's do uh, some thrust on this one. So put our 3D cursor there. Shift A. Make a cylinder. And I'm actually going to make this its own object instead of adding it to the engine. So here... There we go. And then we're going to uh, copy that over. So mirror. Oh, not that one. All right. Let's make a, let's copy that material that we used before, the lazy thrust, and just make it its own by clicking this little double page thing. So now we can customize it and it won't mess up the other one that we already made. Um, let's change the color to a nice lightsaber sky blue. And look at that. The gradient is messed up in this one because of the rotation. So maybe if we could apply rotation. Oh, yeah, they fixed it. Okay. Let's go to rendered view. See what it's looking like. So this fade off is really boring. I want it to be really like a slow, slow fade off. So let's see what we can do about that. Let's try putting the scale at dot one. And now we need to move things back. And yeah, because we scaled it, look at this. I'm holding shift, by the way, when I'm moving this X rotation or X location. Because we only move it, need to move it in very small increments. Let's try dot 25. That makes the fall off a little slower. Let's try quadratic. Oh, that's nice. Even more smooth. All right, sweet. I like that. Now, in my original uh, art, I actually had this bending up. I used some really weird uh, modifier trick to make it bend. So let's see if we can uh, copy that, if I can get lucky. It did take me some finagling. So I'm going to make an, uh, an empty right here, and let's move the empty just straight up. We may have to use this to bend this engine thrust. So uh, let me shade smooth that engine thrust, and then we're going to add a bunch of loop cuts so this thing can actually bend. So that was Control-R, and I'm using my mouse wheel to do that. There we go. Okay, so this thing has a lot of subdivision and, um, and faces. I use the simple deform. So let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, simple deform. And we're actually gonna move it first. And then the mirror modifier will copy that. So the simple deform is here. I have it on bend and then I picked that empty that I just made, which is right there. So now if I rotate this, this empty, look, it's like going all kinds of crazy noodle shapes. So first we want to rotate this on the Y Oh, uh, we have settings here. Sorry. Okay, so it's still bending downwards. Um, so let's change our angle to a negative. So negative 45. And there we go. It bends up. Awesome. So again, <laughs> if you're just like, what just happened? I'm using an empty here. The rotation of it, I did kind of just freestyle it. I pressed RR to kind of get my own rotation. And then um, if the thrust moves off of where it needs to be, just kind of wiggle your, your empty around to get it in the right position. 
to where this thrust cylinder is coming out of the engine uh, roughly. You know, it's not barely visible. Honestly, we're going to be looking at it like this, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, you know, I tried to get it a little bit closer to close to exact, and then um, I'm bending on the y-axis by negative 45. And it looks like my uh, height of the empty kind of decides which way this, this bends. So I'm happy with that. I know it's not an exact bend, but it's good enough. So when we have our camera angle all the way out here, it looks like the thrust was, you know, the ship was going from high down to low and the thrust is still falling behind. Let's do our empty trick to basically make a handle around the ship. I'm gonna scale it up, grab everything and make sure that the empty box is actually bright orange and then control P object. There we go. So everything is parented to there and we can also select it all one more time with M new collection rebel ship. There we go. All right. Now we need to make a planet real quick to uh, complete this scene. So I'm going to shift a make a sphere, a UV sphere. And let's give it a lot of uh, subdivisions. So I'm going to go 180. There we go. And we're going to size this up pretty dang big like there, shade smooth, let's move it way in the background. And once we get our camera angle set, then we'll really position this thing. So I want my camera should basically just be right here. I want my planet to be down here. This spaceship to be roughly up here and this will be here. All right, so let's make our planet and then we'll get to the um, camera and rendering and all that stuff. Oh, and we need to make a starry background too. So new material, name it planet, select BSDF, Control T to make a single image texture. Open, now I have found a bunch of free planet textures online that are no longer free, unfortunately, but you can find um, official textures like these of our own planets in our solar system. So I'm gonna grab this uh, series one. I think this might've been one of the ones I found online that was free, I don't remember. But regardless, you can find some good planet textures that are already the, uh, what is it called? Equirectangular panorama, which means it'll wrap around a sphere perfectly and it'll look like this with no seams or anything because it was made for a sphere and it looks beautiful. Okay, so what do we do to make this really come to life and look cool? Well, first we need to add a little bit of bump, just a little bit. So put a bump down there. We're gonna plug this into the height and let's start by putting these at dot one and dot one. So it's a very low amount of bump. Next, we're going to add some atmosphere. So shift A, mix shader, put it right there. Shift A, diffuse. And the diffuse is actually going to be the haze kind of atmosphere edge. To make it fade out to the edges, we're going to make the, we're going to use the uh, layer weight node. This is really handy. Uh, we're going to combine it with a ramp to customize the fall off. So let's do facing first and then color to mix. So what this is making is a black and white uh, gradient that's always facing the camera. We can control kind of the size of it like that. And then we can also customize how bright and how dark each part is with this color ramp. Let's set that to ease to be a little bit smoother. That looks nice. I like that. So that's controlling this, which is fading between planet texture and uh, let's do a blue atmosphere. So control shift, click this mix shader. So we're back to normal mode and voila, we have this edgy atmosphere. Let's make it a little bit stronger by increasing that white. There we go, cool. Maybe make it a less saturated color so it's not so obnoxious. There we go, and if you want to be like a poisonous, dangerous planet or sandy, you can do like a, you know, orangey yellow color, green or purple for weird stuff. But if it's oxygen habitable, you want to stay in this blue, light blue zone. All right, let's play with the color of this terrain because it doesn't look very welcoming. I'm gonna use a hue saturation. I'm just gonna shift the hue to green. Awesome, now it's a forest planet. Turn up the saturation a little bit. Sweet. We can do another one of these earlier to basically make some clouds. So we're gonna do another diffuse, plug it in just like we did to the atmosphere, but make it white. We're gonna use a noise texture to basically create the mask that will fade between terrain or our surface terrain and this white thing for the clouds. Let's give us a little bit more room here so we can see what's going on. All right, now noise texture is very faint. So I always use a color ramp in conjunction with it. And I usually move things up to right around here. Let's turn up the scale, detail, roughness. Definitely raise up those blacks to make it a little more crunchy. 
And we can play with some of the distortion to get like a twisty wave, a twisty look to the clouds like clouds have. Awesome. Play with this color ramp to get uh, a nice cloudy look. There we go, that's good enough for me. Now let's set our uh, rendered view to have some fisheye distortion. That, that for me was one of the things that made the scene look a little bit more cool. Um, we have a, a, a range of things we can do to make things look cooler. One of them is a fisheye. So what I did there was I changed this from perspective to panoramic, and then I went to the second to last setting, which is fisheye equal solid. Um, so we have the focal length here, which is very wide at 10, and then our field of view, which is basically what we're gonna see. Um, so let's change this to about 35. There we go. And then let's move this TIE fighter closer to the camera. Now, the annoying thing about fisheye uh, techniques is that you have to be in rendered view to see anything. If you go to material or solid, the fisheye no longer applies and things look different. But once you go to fisheye, things suddenly move. Let's make this a little bit wider, maybe 20. There we go. And I'm gonna move the camera forwards on the X axis. It's about there. Let's move our TIE fighter up. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit like this. I want it to be real close to the camera. Give a good foreground. And then the uh, Rebel fighter is gonna be at a weird angle. It's RR to freely rotate it. There we go. It's looking better. I want it to be angled towards the TIE fighter because I want it to actually be shooting the wing and we're gonna do an explosion where the wing is actually getting damaged. So I'm gonna to go to solid view because it's a little faster, even though my, my view is gonna look a little bit different. Let's make sure that this is actually pointing at the TIE fighter. So from this angle, it needs to go right about there. Yeah, that's good. And then a front view, yes. The, 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 the cannons in the front are in fact going to be shooting the TIE fighter at this angle. Let's move it down a little bit. There we go, awesome. And again, this composition isn't good, but when we go to rendered view, things kind of move farther back because we're using a fisheye lens. Let's get this planet more on the edge of our scene. Let's scale it up and move it down a little bit. And yeah, planets get real funky <laughs> uh, with fisheye, especially when they're close to the camera. So let's see how close. Yeah, here's our camera right here. This planet should be farther in the background. Let's make our lens a little bit less fisheye by going to 35 instead of 20. There we go. And I want to have the part of the wing that is on fire obscured. So I don't have to worry too much about those details. So let's do it like this. Awesome. Maybe angle it down a little bit so I can see that thrust. There we go. When rotating ships like this, it's a little easier to go to local mode and then use your, just use your rotation tool on the left so you can see a little gimbal rotation at orbits and you can uh, turn stuff the way you need it to be. There you go. I like this angle actually. It shows the ship and it looks like it's like swooping down. Now let's play with our, our main light here. We have one sunlight which we're gonna put the main sun here. And when we do go in Photoshop, we are gonna add some sun glare and a lens flare coming from where the sun is. Now, normally in this case, in a realistic situation, the sun is back there, the main star, it's gonna be pointing right at the camera uh, because that's just how suns work. They emit light in all directions. But instead of using a point light, which is really weak and annoying, I'm still gonna stick with sun, but I'm gonna angle it right towards the camera. So do that again, I pressed RR. And I kind of point, point that line right at the camera. Now that doesn't really show our uh, ships too well, but we're gonna make it a little bit harsher and we're gonna add a few area lights to cheat and help our scene make sense. So let's put a planet light, which is basically just a light that emits the color of the planet um, to light up this ship. Let's choose an area light. We're gonna point it up to the ship. And the area light is, uh, we're gonna change it to a, a disc shape give it a kind of a bluish color. I'm gonna make it pretty strong. Let's try 1000 watts. Yeah, there we go. See, this color is what the planet would be reflecting onto it. Let's try 5000. Awesome. 
And then we're going to do one for this guy as well. So I'm going to Alt D, which is a, a linked copy. And then I'm going to um, get this location with uh, cursor to selected. And then select that secondary light and uh, Shift S again. And then selection to cursor. So this is a the light is selected. Now we just snapped it onto the cursor, which is over here by the second ship. Let's make sure our light is pointing towards our TIE fighter. Let's zoom in a lot. A lot. There we go. Let's angle a little bit like this because the planet is in the background after all, right? It's way, way back there. So I'm going to give these planet lights a little bit of an angle, but we can cheat so that it's more photogenic. Okay. I'm going to increase the size of this light a little bit. So now we have some blue glow glancing off of this and off of the, uh, the background fighter. And let's add a little fill light to fill in the, the details right here. So I'm just going to click on the ship to get my 3D cursor there. Make a uh, area. Let's move it away from the ship. And let's angle it right back at the ship. Make it kind of big in size. And let's turn it up to maybe 1,000. There we go. I'm going to make it a rectangle so we can control the size of it. So I'm going to make it kind of a wide light. right? Just like that. Awesome. So it's just kind of shooting up like that. And it's okay to cheat. You know, they do this all the time in, in Hollywood. They're always reflect there's they've always got reflectors and fill lights and all kinds of stuff like that to, to light your scene the way that direct that the, that the director wants. So it's photogenic and tells the story. So there we go. We got a little light there. And I do want some more light to be on this ship. So I'm going to shift D to copy this thing. Click over here, shift S selection to cursor. So that just threw that light right over to the other ship. Let's go to solid mode to get that position better. There we go. Cool. So it's pointing at the ship. Let's see what this looks like in rendered view. So without it, with it. Oh yeah, that's good. Very nice. Okay, let's make our starry sky in the background. It's super easy. I can't believe it took me so long to learn this trick. Uh, Shift A, type in a Veronoi. It only takes two nodes. It's amazing. And then a ramp node. There we go. Plug in distance into input, color into color. And we're going to invert these colors and make the black really close to white, just like that. So we essentially have polka dots in the background. And if you change your scale from 5 to 500, you have stars. Now, denoising kind of kills some of it. Let's put it down to 200 in scale. You can play with these also to get a little bit stronger, stronger stars, uh, bigger stars. And for our finished renders, of course, we're going to use a high sample rate. So the stars won't be too denoised and uh, artifacted away. Right now in the viewport, it's this very low sample. It's like 32 samples. So the denoising is overacting and, and killing a lot of the star detail. But they won't be like that in the final render. All right, let's do, uh, well, let's angle this gun. Let's, let's aim the gun at uh, the rebel ship. So, oh, look at this. <laughs> Our parenting was messed up because when we selected everything, remember that, and parented it to the uh, empty, it basically unparented this from this. So this uh, has the wrong parent. So let's fix that. I'm going to fix the rotation of this little uh, bracket. Alt-R and then Alt-Z, or R-Z, there we go. Now let's reparent this. There we go. I'm just resetting all the rotations to zero. Uh, let's parent this to this guy again. Oops. We, this thing disappeared over there because things are moved around and it's confusing. So undo. Let's do the, I'll show you how to fix that. Control P to parent, but use keep transform. There we go. Now it won't go flying away. So let's, arm, let's aim this gun. RZ. Make sure you're using local, not global, because this whole ship's at a funny angle, right? So RZ, there we go. And then RX. Yeah, I think that's a decent aim. Now let's add some bolts coming out of this guy. Let me show you a trick. My friend uh, Wilbert Sweet, really awesome artist, a nice guy. He was asking me, show how to do the bullets. How do you do the lasers and the blaster fire? It's actually really simple. You might laugh at how lazy this is. I'm going to grab this face inside of the gun and I'm going to use normal mode. I'm going to shift D, uh, let's see, Z. Z is the axis that's coming out, all right? 
Now I'm going to extrude that. Awesome. I'm going to bevel the end. Control B. Add a little edge there. Grab this face and shrink it. There we go. And then maybe even shrink this guy a little bit too. All right. So that's one way to do blaster fire. The other way from this guy, I'll do more like a spiky spear shape. Um, uh, but let's give this thing a glow. So control L. Make a new material. Name it um, bolt green. Click here. Press the letter E. Give it a green color. And make it pretty strong, like 10. Make sure to click assign. So this thing will actually emit light. Let's turn off our floor grid. That's really annoying. There we go. Oh, so much better. Let's try maybe 50. There we go. It's emitting some green light. I can see just a little bit of it. And the more bolts we add, it'll get stronger. So let's add some more bolts coming out of here. So back to uh, back into edit mode. Let's see if we can um, duplicate this on that, that same normal. Let's see where it hits. Let's see if we hit our ship. Uh, Shift D. I think it was Z. Oh, yeah, we did. So it's your choice, whether it's really fast or, you know, like a slow fire gun. Um, now, once you do that once, you can press Shift R. Let's see where it hits. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm just, I got to see. Oh, it's a direct hit right to the back of the ship. I don't want it shooting all the way out because that's just a lot. Um, and in fact, these may be too close together. Let's look at our camera view. Yeah, that's a lot. I want it right around there. It's like it's mid journey. It's going to hit him. But you know, this guy, because he's a good guy, he's going to dodge Whoop, like that. So we got the green bolt shooting out. Now let's do this, guys. And we're going to have uh, these firing at the same time, but alternating. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, let's see. I'm going to grab the same thing. We're going to grab that circle inside there just because it's already a circle and it's facing the uh, exact trajectory that we need. So shift DZ. Yep. There it is. I'm going to extrude that. I'm going to add two loop cuts right there. And I'm going to shrink the first one really small and the back one really small. There we go. Just gives it a nice motion like it's uh, just shooting really fast. Control L to grab that whole thing. Let's add a series of these coming out. And I'm going to make them a little bit further apart. But I want them actually hitting the wing. Or maybe it already got hit. Now here's another touch of realism. As a spaceship is traveling and it's shooting, let's say it's shooting straight ahead and it's continuing, it's continuously firing its you know repeated blaster gun, but the ship turns. What happens to those bullets? Well, they show the previous trajectory of where the ship was when it was fired. Because once a ship turns, say 10 degrees to the left and then fires again, the, that shot has a new trajectory. So you can see where the ship was based on where the blaster fire is coming from. So if I'm imagining this ship is coming down and turning up, the earlier shots are gonna be pointing this way and the newer shots are gonna be pointing at the ship. So let's make this its own object. So I'm going to grab all these blaster thingies, control L and then P to separate them. So now this is its own object. Now there's still a mirror modifier happening, which I guess I'm okay with. Um, but I did want these to be shooting alternatingly. So we're going to apply the mirror modifier and we're going to basically move these bolts um, away. So these first bolts were fired earlier, right? These are old bolts the ones that just come out are newer. So we're not going to change this direction, but the older ones are going to be somewhere else and less accurate. So tab into edit mode. First, let's grab all these left bolts and let's move them a little bit earlier in their, um, you know, emission. So G Z, there we go. Actually, I want them like this. Awesome. Da 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 da. Okay, cool. So these uh, first ones right here are older. So let's move these and rotate these a little bit differently. So maybe they are pointing. Oh, let's go to medium. Yeah, let's like rotate them like this and put them down here. These ones are going to be, you know, a little bit less down there. Like that. Maybe it was, you know, steering left and right, doing all kinds of crazy maneuvers. There we go. And if you really get a great angle and a cool story going on, you can really help tell the story by the trajectory of the bullets 
and that the ship is moving all over the place, you know, bullets are missing and, you know, recalculating angles and things like that. Um, with these, I'm also going to make the older bullets up here and the newer ones closer to where they should be. So let's make these a separate object. Select them all, control L, P to separate. Now it's its own individual object. Let's grab this one. And I'm gonna rotate it based on the 3D cursor, which is right here on the gun. So like that, this, this will be a cool one. This will be a little bit more obvious. There. 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 And yeah, that's cool. I like that. And we're gonna add motion blur in Photoshop to really give the impression of fast motion because um, uh, this is a dogfight. So that's cool. Um, I do want this to be hitting a little closer to the ship. It's really like bad. That's a really bad aim. <laughs> so I'm going to rotate this. Let's see. Maybe like that. I can want to just go on just to the left. Like he's almost swerving, you know, like he's sort of going from the left, re-angling to the right. And he's going to, he's about to hit again. And we're going to add some fire like he got hit before and he's been, you know, leaving a trail of smoke or something. So, okay, I think that is mostly it. Oh, we didn't add the glow to these bullets. Let's add that material. Let's delete the other ones because there's no metal textures on these bullet, uh, bullet object. Let's do this, um, what was it? Bolt blue, E, a yeah, richer blue. Let's make this like 50, power 50. Awesome. These ones right here are bothering me. They're just a little too crooked. So I'm gonna realign them. Cool, if you wanna add a little extra atmosphere to your scenes, you can create a volume sphere. This is great to put around muzzles uh, for a muzzle flash or even around engine pieces to give some basically uh, foggy glow around an area. So what I just did was I clicked on this first green blaster bullet and I'm going to shift A and make a sphere. And you'll see it right here. Let's go to object mode. Got this weird sphere that doesn't belong. We're going to make a material on it. I'm gonna call it uh, just haze. Let's switch back to object mode. Let's delete this BSDF because we're gonna use a volume shader. Now this is pretty render intensive. So if you don't have a GPU or have an older one or just don't wanna do long render times, don't do this. You can fake it in Photoshop for the most part later, but I'm gonna do it practically in 3D to show you a cool trick. Shift A, make a gradient texture, put it as a quadratic sphere, plug in factor to density, Shift A, type in range, we're gonna use a mapping range to control that density. And uh, let's put the maximum down here, this very bottom one, to like .01, let's try that first. And um, click in your gradient texture, control T, and put it as object. So the center of the spherical gradient is gonna be the center of the object. Let's go to rendered view and see what this looks like can't see anything. Let's increase our max to dot one. There we go. We see this like hazy cloud. And as this increases to render further samples, it's going to turn into a, a very light, a green cloud because right in the middle of it is this green blaster bolt. So it's going to pick up any light. If I put it by this thrust, it'll be an orange uh, sphere. Um, and yeah, it's just a cool muzzle flash trick. I really like to use. Let's duplicate this and put, put two of them over here by this ship. So I'm gonna do Shift D, click on the ship, Shift S, and let's do selection to cursor. Now back in object mode, let's position these things. Let's see, I'm gonna put it right by the end of the muzzle. Make sure it's roughly centered. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Yeah, there. Because uh, this blast just is coming out right now. So we're gonna let that be hazy. I'm gonna, not gonna put one over here because there isn't anything coming out. And yeah, there we go. Pretty cool. Oh, I do want to put one over here because we're going to have a uh, fire on the wing. So let's see. I'm going to place one yeah, right around there. Make it kind of big. Now there isn't any light over here to, you know, fill up this hazy sphere. So we're actually going to add one. So let's change this uh, view to, let's change the way this sphere renders in the viewport alone by just doing bounding box. There we go. So it is a sphere just in the viewport here. It's only going to show as a, a cube. Uh, so we need to make a little light here. So let's do, uh, let's do a spot or a point. There we go. Make sure it's not inside anything. Let's give it a 
orangey red color. And let's try like 500 watts. I don't really know what this is going to look like. Let's try 5,000. There we go. And we can see that our, our, our little volume sphere is picking up those emitted orange rays and it's slowly getting more and more orange. Cool. I'm going to shrink my sphere a little bit and put it over here. Just move it in a little bit closer to the wing because I want it to be a little bit more obscured. We're going to add a lot of fire and stuff. So honestly, this might not even be visible when we get, when we get done with Photoshop. Okay. That's it for the scene creation. Let's do the, some render settings. I'm going to do just do a normal HD render at, you know, 1080. As for samples, I'm going to go to maybe 400. Um, let's go to the very bottom and set our color management to have some good amount of contrast. Let's do, I'll do, uh, medium high contrast. I, I pretty, I often use that setting. Now there's a lot of shadows in the front of the ship and I'm not really liking that. Um, so we can add some extra light from this guy if we just size it up a little bit more and then increase the brightness to maybe 3000. There we go. I like that. It's not shining too much off the glass. And I want to make a second one here to light up some of these, uh, boring shadow areas. Awesome. I also want the ship to be tilting downwards a little bit more so we can see more of the ship. So I'm just going to rotate it downwards just a little bit. The bolts are still cool. I like that spray. Looks pretty awesome. And our little volume spheres and light are, I think we, I think we lost our light. <laughs> yeah, it went inside the wing. There we go. See, it's glowing. That's what we want. That'll be for the fire. Awesome. That's a much better angle. I can see the ship. I can appreciate the design of it a little bit more and uh, it just looks more cinematic. I'm going to move my planet a little bit more into the scene here and we can rotate it around to find a good position with RR. Just kind of rotate. Let's go to material view. It's a little bit faster here. I want to find a good spot of the planet that I like. That crater's cool, but the shadows might be problematic. Here, this is kind of a nice little terrain piece right here. If you want to add ocean, you can uh, you can basically add in uh, that in the shaders. Here, we're going to do one more. <laughs> so many mixed shaders. Um, let's do a BSDF so we can make it reflective. Let's make it a blue color. Turn your roughness down to like under dot one, really, really low. There. And then let's use a musgrave to mask in the ocean on this planet. Use a color ramp. And I'm going to use a really cool uh, mode in Musgrave that I just learned recently. I'm going to go to Rigid Multifractal, turn the detail up, dimension down to like dot two, and gain at 100. When you put that gain up, it gets a really nice, uh, look at this, super awesome organic cloudy tendril look. And if we add some, um, some you know, contrast like that, looks really good. Let's see how that looks for an ocean. Okay, ocean's a little dark. Let's make it a little bit lighter. So brighter and less saturation. There we go. And we can control, you know, of course, the scale. There we go. That's looking pretty natural. Little ocean areas spread around. Awesome. And because the water areas has a low roughness, it will reflect sunlight and sunlight will glare off of it. Let's go to rendered mode and see what that looks like. Oh yeah. So the water, the blue areas are much more reflective than the land areas. Uh, so you'll get a, gl a glare, a glint of sun off of the ocean, but not the land. Now, something I should have done earlier is uh, make sure that any lights you've added, a new object you've added are parented to this empty so that when you move things around, they will move with it. Uh, this empty, is it parented as well? Yes, it is. So now I think everything will move with it. Awesome. So I want to Pay attention to my composition. If you want to make a good piece of art, you got to use the rules of art, such as a rule of third is my favorite rule. Um, and this is going to help you make more interesting compositions. So on the bottom left, lower third is our main focus, which is the ship. The second main focus is the second ship. And then of course the planet. So we need to move this a little to the right to make a better um, layout with the rule of thirds. Cause you want things to land on those intersection points. So there, that's pretty good. You got one on the bottom left, one on the top right, and then this planet to kind of offset the composition. I think that looks pretty sweet. Let's do a quick render test and see what this looks like. 
All right, here it is. It looks pretty great. Um, one thing I forgot to do was add some composition um, nodes to add some extra glare and glow to the bright parts, but I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, you know, it's kind of flat, it's kind of dry, but that's where the post-processing comes in. We'll be able to add a lot of custom glare and glow, some motion blur, and of course uh, the fire and stuff like that. So let's go back to Blender real quick. I'll show you how to add those composition nodes, and then this video will be over part one, and then part two, we'll do the Photoshopping in there. So let's zoom in here to composition nodes, or sorry, the compositor. I keep saying composition because I've been talking about compositions for a while. Uh, let's add the glare node. There we go. And change it to fog glow. And we're gonna open up the rendered result in the bottom view down here. So change from 3D view to image editor and type in RE for render results. There it is. All right, so we already have some, uh, some glare going on. Press number one to see it uh, full size or 100%. You know, no, no zooming. I'm gonna turn my threshold down to dot five so that more things are glowing than were before. Like that, looks nice. And uh, we can also kind of fade this out a little bit if it's a little too strong by going to the left with this mix. So this basically is like a DJ crossfader. If at negative one, it's just the original render. At positive one, it's only the glare. Like this is, this is the glow right here, nothing but the glow. At zero, it's both of them evenly mixed. The crossfader is in the middle of two, the two decks, playing both tracks evenly. So I'm going to go to negative dot five. So it's kind of a little more towards the original and a little bit of glare added on top. That looks uh, pretty good. We can see our volume cube here glowing with uh, that gun uh, fire coming out. This is the, the glow for the fire damage. And this one is glowing right here because of the green coming out. Looks pretty great. Not not too happy with um, the thrust back here. It just looks like a weird orb. So probably gonna erase that when I do my final render and I'll just add a glow artificially in Photoshop for the thrust coming out of the, the back of those. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. Well, I hope you guys will check out part two to learn some Photoshopping tricks to bring your renders to a new level. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, ask down below. You can find a link to this kit bash and my other amazing kit bashes. There are actually two other Star Wars kit bashes I sell. Uh, I should say Star Wars inspired to, you know, avoid a ginormous lawsuit from Disney. But uh, check those out on Blender Market and Gumroad. Thank you guys. Have a great week.